So this poem is on the theme of uh, death in the family and uh, Tony Harrison, a modern poet, was interested in exploring how we are more like our parents than we think uh, we are. Uh, this poem is semi-autobiographical. He drew on his own experience of losing his mother and actually more significantly for him of watching his father lose his mother um, and how that then impacted his relationship with his father when he eventually passed on as well. Um, so it covers the themes of parenthood, of childhood, of death and of our relationships with, with other people. Um, so firstly, the title of the poem, Long Distance, uh, this title is metaphorical um, and highly metaphorical. It may connote the distance between the father and the mother after the mother passes on. It may also connote the distance between the dad and the son because of how the dad responds to his grief. And uh, it may also connote just the, the strain in the relationships that often comes about through death. So the title is highly metaphorical. Um, he opens in a tone of detachment. Um, he, he actually sounds almost cruel. Uh, my mother was already two years dead. Um, and that word already, um, there is a certain cruelty to that. Just this detached tone. Um, connoting perhaps that Harrison is uh, perhaps closer to his father and certainly already has closure about the death of his mother in a way that his father certainly does not have. And we see that through the three actions that his father continues to perform for his wife, who is now deceased. He keeps her slippers warm by the fire. He puts hot water bottles her side of the bed and he renews her transport pass. So this tripartite list um, of actions traditionally associated with long-term, often marital love, were they're very mundane, very ordinary, um, small acts of love. Um, so this tripartite list of mundane actions associated with love. And you note that two of them are to do with heat, um, slippers warming by the gas and hot water bottles. So this imagery of heat, um, again, connoting an ongoing love uh, and passion that his father has and a refusal to accept what has really happened to the mother. This clearly causes a strain in the relationship between the son and the father, evidenced through the first line of the next stanza, you couldn't just drop in, you had to phone. And those short sentences creating a tone of angst um, as the son struggles to relate to his father and uh, and to understand what his dad is going through. Um, that says you're again reinforces his frustration, tone of frustration, as the father's grief comes between the relationship in the father and the son. Uh, he goes on to talk about his dad's ongoing love. He put you off an hour to give him time to clear away her things and look alone. And the enjambment um, between the, those two lines, that single sentence, Again, it protracts the time and slows the pace to reflect the length of time needed for the, the father to prepare a facade of closure and to conceal the extent of his grief. And the, the nature of his ongoing longing for his dead wife uh, is conveyed through this metaphor, raw love, almost like an open wound. Um, something that just hasn't healed. So uh, that is a metaphor connoting his ongoing grief. And again, the hyperbole of crime. Uh, the father worrying that his longing for his wife is something wrong, something shameful, um, which is further reinforced through the metaphor blight. A blight is like a plague or an illness. Um, that's how he sees his refusal to move on. Again, it's a metaphor and it is seen as something shameful 
And that is, I suppose, the key word, the father's shame in his inability to move on. In, in real pathos uh, in this next line, the father hopes to hear the scrape of his wife's key. The use of onomatopoeia there creates immediacy. Um, as if as if the father wishes it to happen all the time. Um, so Scrape uses, oh, I'm running out of room. Scrape uses, I'll put it up here, onomatopoeia there, um, which creates immediacy. Uh, however, that is juxtaposed with the adjective rusted. Reinforcing that this lock has not been used in a long time because, of course, the wife has been dead for two years. Um, and therefore, the, the lock hasn't been used. Uh, the irony, of course, that he will never hear the sound of her key in the lock again. Now, the final stanza brings about an unexpected tonal shift. Uh, in the first line of the last stanza, we hear Tony Harrison's own agnosticism. I believe that life ends with death and that is all. And that end stopped line there creates finality um, to connote, uh, I suppose to reflect the fact that life ends with death for Tony Harrison. So end stop line reflecting his agnosticism. However, he contradicts himself through his final statement. You haven't both gone shopping just the same in my new black leather phone book. There's your name and the disconnected number I still call. So this really significant tonal shift at the end where Harrison admits that he acts in exactly the same way as his father did towards his mother when his father eventually dies. He acts the same way and Tony Harrison emphasises that through these, um, these internal rhymes, shopping and popped to show that dad and son act exactly the same way. Um, they both have the same response to grief. Uh, they both believe that the, the, the other person will come back and cannot gain closure for the loss of a loved one. Um, the colour imagery of the black leather phone book, um, of course, very significant there, black being associated with death. However, and, and of course, sorry, the adjective disconnected, showing that the father is indeed dead, and yet he still calls it. Um, so the, this, this idea that Tony Harrison acts in exactly the same way as his father did, uh, contradicts himself, the disdain that he felt towards his, father, his father's refusal to accept the death of his mother has no impact on how he acts once his dad dies. Um, the desire to preserve life continues, uh, showing the strength of the relationship between father and son. Just a final note on the structure of the poem. This poem is divided into four even quatrains written in iambic pentameter, which, as we know, iambic pentameter always creates a conversational tone as Tony Harrison reflects on his father's grief and subsequently on his own grief. Um, the rhyme scheme in this poem is very significant. As you can see at the beginning, we have an A, B, A, B rhyme scheme. So dead and bed rhyme. And then we have gas and pass, which rhyme. Uh, so that's an A, B, A, B rhyme scheme. For the first three stanzas, you have, as you see, phone alone, and then time crime, belief, grief, and then key T. So A, B, A, B. But in the final stanza, it shifts. We should always use that word shifts. Try not to use the word changes. Shifts is much more technical. In the final stanza, we have all, same, name, call, and therefore it changes, it becomes A, B, B, A. And that shift in the rhyme scheme reflects Tony Harrison's changed outlook and his realisation that his father was not committing some shameful crime or um, was not acting in a way that was unjustifiable. Actually, his father was acting in a way that was perfectly rational and reasonable as someone who was in love uh, Tony Harrison's own love and respect for his father causes him to deny his father's death and to um, fail to find closure.
And that is reflected in the shift in the rhyme scheme, which shows his new understanding and outlook.